instinct or pattern. It's a really important distinction to make when we're seeking to do things in a natural way, to, to do things as we're naturally inclined to do. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode of Chi Life. So Qigong, or certainly Qigong as I think about it and as I practice it, um, a big part of that is seeking to do things naturally, seeking to return to a natural state and to operate harmoniously within what is natural for us to do. We're really not trying to do anything that's artificial or unnatural, uh, but we do apply our consciousness, our awareness, into guiding us into natural ways of doing things, natural functioning within our body, within our mind, within our emotions and so on, so that we can be fully he healthy, um, fully harmonious and, you know, and, and live our lives to the fullest. Now, that relates specifically to Qigong, it also relates to more broadly as a philosophy of life and other things that we might do within our lives, you know, what we eat and other types of activity as well, but it, it applies very much to Qigong. Now, within that view of things, because there's, there's lots of people who, you know, aspire to doing things naturally and recognize this, this value of, you know, connecting to nature, there can be a tendency or a school of thought or, you know, people who uh, might take the approach of just doing whatever feels natural. And in some circumstances some context that will work absolutely fine that will be just fine because the natural instinct is in place to al allow us to discover what's natural but you notice i then said natural instinct and then also whether or not it's it's in place and it's healthy or not because what happens in life is yeah we're born with natural instincts that you know we, we're natural creatures natural way to do things and instincts that guide us in that but then into that we also are trained and habituated in many ways and this comes from all sorts of things from our physical environment from what our parents teach us from experiences that we might have with other people um, and or even things like injuries or illnesses and then this can shift us away from what is strictly natural and healthy and create patterns within us that uh, how, well, they become deep habits of how we function, whether that be how we move or whether that be how our energy flows. And if we're not aware of this distinction between what's truly natural, what's truly healthy, what's based on instinct versus what is a pattern that has somehow become ingrained, then if we just do whatever comes naturally, there's a good chance that what we'll do is follow our existing patterns rather than digging to a deeper level of what is the, you know, the true healthy natural instinct. And when we follow those patterns, some of those patterns might be quite healthy, and so it's fine to follow them, but some of them might be really unhealthy as well. And so we then just reinforce that, make that stronger, make that stronger, potentially putting us more out of balance, more out of harmony, but it feels natural to us because it's been ingrained. And this is where there's a balance in terms of how we look at things broadly in life, but also, well, specifically within our Qigong practice, and where we find, yes, following instinct and tapping into our natural instinct is really important. But we also need to assess to some degree how well is that instinct operating? How well is it unimpeded? by other things so that we can truly rely on it and follow that or do we also or is there benefit to also bring in conscious awareness to guide us towards what is healthy and then once we've successfully guided ourselves towards what is healthy then allow our natural instinct our natural pattern to flow and to guide what we do within that and so there's yeah, there's a balance to be found between just following what's unconscious, what's un instinctive, and then also using consciousness to direct, be aware, assess what's happening, 
whether something's healthy, whether it's not, and then guide us into a healthy pattern uh, and maybe out of unhealthy patterns, which we can then allow to function and then allow to flow. So, um, yeah, I, I guess that's a bit of an intellectual take on it, a, an intellectual take on something that often can occur, not intellectually, it can occur unconsciously, but it's helpful to have this intellectual awareness. In, in practice, in terms of how this maybe applies directly to your Qigong practice, this is why, generally to begin with, in terms of doing Qigong practice, we'll begin by using specific movements, um, which stimulate our energy flow in specific ways, align our body in specific ways, get our body moving in specific ways, to bring us into a healthy state of functioning. And then once we've established that, once we've consciously guided ourselves into a healthy way of moving, of having our energy moving, then we're in a much better position to then work with um, practices where we allow our natural instinct, our unconscious, to guide what we do. And so we, yeah, we often start with that conscious part to, to create a healthy base, to make, make sure we're, we're in the healthy zone and we're not off here so, somewhere else. Once we're in there, ah, now we can flourish within that and our healthy uh, instincts can come out in a, in a useful, beneficial way. All right, hopefully that's interesting, beneficial for someone. Um, I look forward to seeing you on another vlog soon.